So just like usual, we're gonna dive right into the topic and I've gotta tell you guys something that just happened and it's honestly something that happens every single day. You see and hear about people all the time who are able to save ridiculous amounts of their income. I mean like, 40%, 50%, 90%. And it might even make you think, how is that even possible? Because when you look up how much the average American saves, you find that most people don't even have $1,000 saved. So then you're confused. And so you ask yourself, how much of your income should you save? And it's my job to answer that question in the most clear, direct way possible. First of all, we need to break this down into a monthly basis. When you try to look at everything as broad as a yearly standpoint, and then you look at how much am I supposed to save each year, it's harder to manage how much you're supposed to save. So the question then becomes, how much of my paycheck do I save? But honestly, that doesn't have a clear cut and dry answer either. That's not something that's gonna be a one size fits all answer. It's just not. And usually it's recommended that you save 20% of your income, 20% of your paychecks, no matter what. But I highly disagree with that. First of all, we're gonna to need to look at what you're making per year. Year, and that means we're gonna have to look at a range of what everybody is making per year. So I've cut this into four different pay ranges. So the first pay range is anywhere between $15,000 and $30,000 per year. The second pay range is anywhere between $31,000 and $54,000 per year. The third range is anywhere between $55,000 and $80,000 a year. And then the fourth range is $82,000 per year and up. So if you're in pay range number one, chances are you do not live alone. Chances are you're either married, you have a roommate, or you live with your parents. So for me to recommend saving 20% here really doesn't make that much sense. It's really not that realistic to me. Like if you live with somebody else, nine times out of 10, you can put away a lot more than 20%. So in this case, I would say save as much as you literally can. I mean, if you're in pay range number one, save as much as you can. And just to clarify, this usually represents the younger side of people. This is what I call the just getting started range. And these are minimum wage employees or just any type of entry level employee in most sectors. But outside of just the salary, we need to look at one thing, the financial goal. And let's be honest, if there's no financial goal, there's no definite aim, there's no target to hit. And that leads to people just spending here, saving there, without making any real progress. And then at the end of the year, you find out that you were only able to put away a few hundred dollars within that year, when you could have saved thousands. And just to throw some specific goals out there, the goal might be to get your own place, you know, move out of the place that you and your roommate are living at and live by yourself. The goal might be to move out of your parents' house. Same principle applies. Your goal might be to buy your first car. Your goal might be to save up your first $1,000 or to even save up an entire year's salary. And I know I mentioned that this usually represents the younger side, but there's people in all walks of lives in every single category that I'm listing, so don't get it twisted. Like, whichever one applies to you, make it applicable to your life, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm just generalizing here so you guys can get the big picture view. So as you can see, there's a lot of variety here. And in my opinion, the lower the salary, the higher you should aim to save, especially if you're not living alone. And if you're able to save 40 to 50% of your salary consistently, you can reach every single one of those financial goals that I just listed. And if you're diligent enough with it, it can happen within a year's time. The key here is to really be intentional and maximize on what you can save. Even if you don't hit the 40 to 50%, try to get as close to it as possible. Now, what most people don't realize is that people within this pay range have a massive advantage over all the other pay ranges. And like I said, it's because it typically represents people who are young, people who are new to personal finance. So they typically aren't set in their ways yet of bad financial habits. See, while you're working on these financial goals, chances are your salary is going to go up. You might even find another way to make extra money on the side to reach these goals faster. Just know that when more money comes in, keep your expenses exactly the same as they are. That way you can really maximize on how much you're saving. You can really save a lot of money that way. And if you are in this salary range and you do live alone, I'd highly recommend that you get a roommate or something and split the bills it would make your life a ton easier and you would be able to save much more money than you ever have before. Now, moving on to the $31,000 to $54,000 range. This is the range where the average American makes their money. That's right, this is what the average American makes between this range. That said, there's definitely people in different walks of life that fit this exact pay range. There's several entry-level 
young people, but there's also several seasoned individuals where their salary tends to cap out at in their respective field, especially once they hit the 45 to 50K range. So the biggest difference between this pay range and the just getting started pay range, we're introducing debt to the equation as well as other financial responsibilities such as children, insurance, etc. Again, this isn't the case 100% of the time. I'm purely just generalizing this and fit it to you however it fits your life. But usually this pay range has older people than the previous pay range, which is why I'm introducing kids and all these other responsibilities into the mix. Think of the first pay range between teenagers and you know their early 20s and then think of the second pay range as mid 20s on up so this pay range right here is what i call the average american range and to be completely honest with you this is where most people are just one missed paycheck away from being broke which is exactly why i'd recommend saving 40 percent of your income if you don't live alone but the biggest difference is with the average american pay range you see that a lot of these people also live alone so there's a good split between a lot of them living with other people and living by themselves and that's and that's generally what happens when you see an increase in salary. You see more people living alone than not. That said, in the case that you are living alone and you are in this pay range, or if you're just the one who's paying all the bills, that automatically makes it a lot harder to save that 40%. So I would recommend aiming between 25 and 30%. And if you can get more, get more. But even that is very difficult. But I'm telling you, that's the number you need to hit if you're gonna reach your financial goals, get out of debt, establish yourself, and not be one of those people who are just one missed paychecks away from being broke. And if you want more on that, check out my video about Dave Ramsey's baby steps and how to get out of debt fast. I'll link it up here and in the description. And for this second pay range, when I introduce debt, I'm talking about credit card debt, I'm talking about student loan debt, I'm talking about car loans. That's, that's what I'm talking about here. Because generally when people are within this pay range, they feel a little more financially well off, so they buy a little bit more. As a result, they end up being in more debt. Now here's where it gets real. Now I'm putting the third and fourth pay range together within the same category because obviously both of them make more money than all the other ones discussed. Look, I wanna drop some knowledge on you guys. These are the established range and the wealthy range respectively. And I'm gonna paint a picture for you right now. So when you make over $55,000 a year, especially if you have a family and you're splitting the bills, you're gonna to start to feel a lot more established than you actually really are. You know what I mean? You're eligible for a lot more credit cards than ever before. You think, oh, I can afford this. Oh, I want this, so I'm gonna get it. And again, guys, I'm just generalizing. Everybody in this pay range ain't like this. But I will say this, based off of what I've experienced, based off of what I've seen, based off of what I've read, most people within these pay ranges are most susceptible to lifestyle inflation. When you look at these two pay ranges, you see a wide variety of people, but these are the people that everyone looks at and says, oh my God, they're successful. These are the doctors, the lawyers, accountants, engineers, nurses. But guess what? A lot of these people are just one missed paycheck away from being broke too. Why? Because as their salary goes up, so do their bills. Just think about it. Someone gets a $20,000 raise and then boom, there's a new house, there's a new car, the family goes out to eat more often now at fancier restaurants and there's more extravagant vacations and it's because they're not used to the newfound cash flow. And look, there's nothing wrong if you wanna just do one of these once you got a raise, but no, what do most people do? They do all of them at once. That's what they do. Why do that? I mean, seriously, why do that? Look, y'all, this money that you get when you get a raise is literally nothing but pennies on top of what you are already making at work. Believe me when I say that. It is not like you just hit the lottery and now you can just buy whatever you want. It's, it's not like that. You literally just made a few extra thousand dollars per year. That's all it is. Now, I know I'm raising my voice a little bit, but I'm really passionate about this. But I'm going to give y'all an example, man, like a real life example of me. So one time my salary went up $12,000, right? So that breaks down to 1,000 extra dollars a month, right? Wrong. A good chunk of that gets taxed. So how would I look if I went and got a bigger, better, nicer place, whether it's a house or apartment, paying 500 extra dollars a month than I'm paying now just because I got a, a raise? I would be looking sick. That's not cold. That's not being cold with money. That's being stupid with money. Because why, how, how much extra dollars would I be saving per month if I did that? And then you forget about all the hidden fees of getting a new place, and then you're really looking sick. So yeah, you can imagine in this specific scenario how it makes a ton of sense to keep the same exact lifestyle. Do you see what I mean? That's exactly what my point is. 
So why not changing your lifestyle is how to save a lot of money. And that's why I always say if you can't handle $40,000, you definitely aren't going to be able to handle $400,000. That's just facts. Tell me this, man. Tell me this. Tell me this. What is the use in living paycheck to paycheck and you're making six figures a year? It's literally no different than the person who's making forty to $50,000 a year and living paycheck to paycheck. Y'all were in the same exact boat. But we look at people like that that make six figures like they're successful. Not necessarily. If you can't manage your money properly, I don't consider that to be successful at all. Speaking of that, y'all, check out my video about how to stop living paycheck to paycheck. Again, linked in the description, linked up here. But to stay on topic, this is exactly why I said in the beginning that the first couple of ranges do have the advantage over the last two ranges. That's because these two pay ranges are set in their ways. And you see as the salaries get higher and higher and higher, you see more credit card swipes, more spending money on things that they can't afford. Why? Because they're shiny, because they're nice, because they're impressive. My question, who are you trying to impress? Nothing but credit card swiping and just paying everything off. I'm talking cars, TVs, refrigerators, computers, all kinds of stuff. For no reason. And for what? For what? And look, I understand building your credit up. I understand that. But why is it that everything you own, everything that is in your possession, everything that is in your house, why is everything something that you're still paying off? If you make so much money per year, why? Why is there so much consumer debt? And then got the nerve to say, oh, I need more money. Oh, I need a raise. Get out of here with that, man. Get out of here. That's not cold, man. That's sweet. You got to be cold. Look, look, just don't be irresponsible with your money. It's really, it's that plain and simple. That said, you're going to want to save 30% of your income in this one. And if you do this correctly and consistently, you can put you and your entire family in a completely different financial future if you start right now. So I know I got extremely passionate in this video, but that is the entire video. I'm really passionate about this subject. When it comes to saving money, getting out of debt, I'm all over it. Like I just, that's just how I feel about it. A lot of people don't get taught in schools about this. And a lot of folks fall into bad habits that were either learned from just seeing or they were developed because they never had anything growing up. I get it, trust me, I get it, but I'm here to help you break those habits. And sometimes that requires me to raise my voice a little bit, but I'm passionate about it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for checking this video out. I will see you in the next one. Stay cold.